Yeah. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Very welcome. Yes, very welcome. You. And I, I wanted also to show you, I, I, I can't, probably can't give this to you at this time. Yes. This is a very rare book, yes. like the other one you were looking for. Yes. But this is by Michael Bray, yes. a Lutheran pastor. Yes. Uh, from many, this is several decades ago. Yes. He has, I think, 12 children now. He's been my friend for since the 1990s. Yes. He spent time in prison in the 1980s because he was involved in uh, blowing up two or three, allegedly, two or three abortion clinics in the, Mer in the United States. Um, so he, he was convicted of um, a felony in that, but he went back with his family and fathered several different children after that. And he wrote a book called A Time to Kill. Yes. And uh, this one I, I, I want to loan to you yes. because he has asked me to look for someone who can translate it into Swahili. Yes. So maybe you can help me find yes, that, I that someone. That we yeah. shall do. That and, we shall do. And this one is, a, he, he speaks of different instances, for example, St. Joan of Arc, yes. uh, wherein Christians who were responsible for the gospel were also forced yes to use force, yes. to use the sword, yes. to intervene to stop people from killing yes. innocent people. Yes. From the times of slavery yes. to the medieval times yes. up till today. Yes. So I thought you would be interested to, to look at this book. Thank you very much. But I will, I will come back for it. You'll come I will come back for it. Yeah. <laughs> it <laughs> because, because it's one of, the, one of the last copies which are available. And I got it directly from the author. Thank you very yeah. much. Very well. I am extremely <laughs> lucky. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay, I've, I've been told that at Afia Center, not far from here, there is someone called Dr. John Nyamo. Mm -hmm. Dr. Karanja, do you know someone at Afia Center called Dr. John Nyamu? Yes, I do. You know him? Yes. Uh, is there anything you can tell me about him? I've been told that yes. he is an abortionist. Is it true? Yes, it is true. He's an abortionist. He's an abortionist. And he's not only an abortionist, Dr. Dr. Nyamu is actually one of the most powerful controllers of the abortion movement in this country and in this part of Africa, in this region. Because Dr. Nyamu is actually the point person, the point representative person of the abortion movement, the, the international NGOs that promote abortion in this country and in this region. They protect him? Not only protect him, but they fund him and take care of him. Dr. Nyamu is one of the most powerful people in this country, both financially and even in matters political, because he has powerful protection and sponsorship from the abortion movement from the West. Elective abortion is a felony, so why is Dr. Nyamu never prosecuted? You can't prosecute Nyamu. One, because he will be defended by people, by the most senior advocates in this country, and some may even be imported. Number two, this is Africa, and you can be able to subvert justice because of lack of the spine when you're dealing with a patronizing world that the country including the judiciary relies on so you do not you you do not go to look for justice in the courts you may never find it there and the ministry of health they will not touch Dr. Nyamu. He is not an employee of the Ministry of Health. Okay. He is a private specialist gynecologist. But he is under the medical board, which is an arm of the Ministry of Health. But Nyamu was actually taken to court in this country because of being accused of killing more than 28 babies who were picked along Mombasa Road mm -hmm. and it is the most shocking thing that has ever happened in this country the discovery of those babies 
And because they had notes and prescriptions coming from his clinic, he was actually sued and went to court for a long time. For the first time in this country. I saw a lot of medical people wearing white coats and its stethoscopes in courtroom in support of Dr. Nyamu. Ultimately, Dr. Nyamu was set free. Has he broken the Hippocratic Oath? I do not think he subscribes to the so he Hippocratic break. Oh, so you can't you can't you can't break okay. that which you do not uh, subscribe to is he, you, is he your friend he is not my friend in terms of medical and social and the war and standing for the for, for the right of people your senior colleague, Dr. Kagia, Dr. Jean Kagia, whose, uh, whose offices are in this building, said, Dr. Nyamu is a very good friend of mine. She said she has meals with him regularly, and she defended him as a person. Do you have anything to say about that? Yes. The, she, he could be extremely friendly. They mm. could be friends mm. with Dr. Kagia. But I've told you why he can't be my friend is because I would not wish to be associated with a person who clearly and openly supports abortion. If Dr. Jean Kagia would find it appropriate to be friend and to become very close friends with an, an apologetic, apologetic abortionist, then, of course, she has her own rights. That is her business. Um, we interviewed Dr. Kagia at length. I should say Cradles of Love did Cradles of Life. Rather, let me say this again. Cradles of Life interviewed Dr. Kagia earlier last year at length, some months ago. Uh, it's, a, it's an extensive interview. Dr. Kagia, when the cameras were off in front of witnesses, uh, Dr. Kagia asked Wavinya Wanyasa to have her tubes tied, uh, recommending that she had had too many children and should not have any more children, who was, was pregnant at the time, is pregnant now. Uh, Wavinya has told me about this uh, comment after the interview. Subsequently, Dr. Kagia uh, called Wavinya and once again has encouraged her to be sterilized. Do you have anything to say about that advice? Mm, I, at two levels. Number one, I would kindly request that I do not answer anything at all directly to do with Dr. Kagia. All right. But I would advise Wavinia that it is wrong it is even criminal. It is, and if she is a Christian, it would be going beyond anything known to accept to be joined in the absurdity of contraception, abortion, castration, and I mean, and, 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 and tying the tubes, yeah. tying, the, tying her tubes. Yeah. So I would... It is female castration. I would, I would, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. I would tell, I would tell now, directly to Wavinia. Wavinia. Do not tie your tubes. It is not your duty to do that. It is not necessary to do that. No human being, no woman should ever be subjected to something that is done in animals cows and whatever the animals they do but human beings are created in the image of god of god and you do not you do not tie the tubes of any woman for any reason and i advise wavinia not to accept advice to tie her tubes from anybody in the medical field or outside the medical field anywhere in the world
for Dr. Kagia, I leave her to her own own conscience. Okay, you are on record having having said that. When I met Dr. Kagia first, I was introduced to her by Wabinya several years ago in Uhuru Park. And I was happy to interview her. I had a camera at the time. I interviewed her. And she told me about her wonderful work she does as helping, uh, in terms of helping women in crisis pregnancies. And we talked for many long minutes about that. But then I came to what I really wanted to ask her about. And three times I asked Dr. Kagia regarding the 2010 Constitution, what we should do, how she could advise us to remove the terrible abortion language, allowing the Ministry of Health and others to allow legalized abortion in Kenya. And three times I worded it three different ways. And those three times, every time Dr. Kagia said, don't think about that, forget about that, and don't think about that anymore. What do you have to say about that? I respectfully decline to comment on anything to do with Dr. Kagia. I understand, I understand. Now, regarding a certain passage in the Bible, there's a doctor who, in our interview, I won't tell you who he or she was, but there's a doctor who, in our interview, uh, referred to a passage from Timothy, a famous passage where, where the Apostle Paul told Timothy that if anyone doesn't provide for the members of his own family, that person is worse than an infidel. And this doctor... So we're not talking and you're not responding specifically about Dr. Kagia or any other doctor right now, but you're responding to this idea. That the Bible authorizes, this doctor said, contraceptives on the basis of Paul's command that uh, a man must provide for his own household. And from this doctor's perspective, that command to Timothy means we should use contraceptives. Is that a perversion of the scripture or is this correct? There is nowhere in the whole Bible, not just in Timothy, Mm. nowhere in the whole Bible is the idea of contraception ever at all given as an edict, as an advice, or as anything. Is it even winked at? not at all and 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 what i want to say is that that i would consider it extremely rude for anybody to associate the bible with uh, their unchristian behavior and beliefs quote any other thing you want to quote if you want to do the things you want to do including contraception but not the bible not the bible the bible is the book of life it doesn't need any other definition it is the book of life it is the word of god so to quote it in defensive sterilization is is, is a it's curse evil. it's evil it's evil yes um Are you aware, now I know you have told me you are not going to comment on anything uh, regarding Dr. Kagia directly, but I'm going to ask you anyway, whether you forgive me or not, I have such audacity. Uh, Are you aware professionally, because you have sworn and are, let me me back up, let me back up Dr. Karanja. You have sworn the Hippocratic Oath. I I have. The full oath which says, I will not perform abortion. I have. Yeah, and I will do no harm. In fact, the whole the whole foundation of the hippocratic oath is primum non nocere in whatever you do first do no harm on issues of abortion it even says if in your mind you contemplate giving anything or any concussion for the purposes of procuring an abortion 
you have already broken the oath. You already excommunicated yourself. From the church of God. From the church of God. And, fr and from, uh, from being from, a doctor. From being a doctor. Yeah, you are not Never a doctor. Never mind whether you are Muslim or it Christian. It doesn't matter. Yeah. You are from that time a witch. A witch person. If you are a man, is a witch. You, you are a witch. You are a witch because whatever you are doing now, you are doing on foundations that the founder of the profession known as medicine taught from the beginning that to practice this art, you must not that you need to agree. No, you must. You can't be a doctor and break the oath. You are outside the definition of a physician. Yes, you to be a physician, you must respect the Hippocratic oath. So when we say Dr. John Yamu, this is only a formality. He is. He is not really he a doctor. He is not a doctor. He is an abortionist. All right. All right. And abortionists, maybe can even other people can cure, can treat a lot of things, but that does not make them doctors. Yeah. To be a doctor, yeah. you must respect the Hippocratic Oath. The Hippocratic Oath. Yes. Does Dr. Kagia, to your knowledge, prescribe chemical or hormonal contraceptives? No comment again. No comment again. Now, regarding chemical and hormonal contraceptives, are they potentially abortifacient? Not potentially. They all chemical you see the chemical contraceptives are made from two hormones estrogen and progesterone they have a minimum of five mechanisms of action prevent ovulation by attacking the egg affect the fallopian tube affect the pituitary gland affect the cervical mucus but over 50 percent of modern contraception works by affecting the endometrium so that the con so that the little baby cannot be implanted in the womb indeed it is correct to say at the level of science that all all contraceptives that are dependent on the two hormones, estrogen and progesterone, way up work by causing abortions. It is not that they are potentially abortifacients. They are abortifacients. They cause abortions. They are made to do that. It is not that they do that as a side effect. Hormonal contraceptives are made to cause abortion. They are a tool of chemical abortion. Does this include uh, pills, injections, and coils? Co co coil is on two levels. The original coil, the Lipes loop, worked. I wish you could give me just one minute to show you what I mean. All right. Because I have it here. All right. All right. I've never... these, are, these are the demons. I want you to look at them and know them. The demons as they exist. This is this is the lipes loop. It is the lipes loop. Like you can see, if you pull it up, it gets straight. If you do it like that, it goes into a coil system. In fact, the name coil comes from this gadget. That's the name where the name coil is. Like you can see, it has a plastic material on top. And it has a nylon, two nylon strings here that normally are left in the birth canal when this is put up. Why was this made up and how does it work? This gadget, the coil, has only one mechanism of action. It is made to 
prevent implantation. It is made to poison the lining of the womb. This is an abortive, an aborting, an aborting creation. It doesn't have any other mechanism of action. This is the coil. I understand. And there are modifications of it. Initially in the 70s, it was found in the third world, including Africa here. During that time, what was available in your country and in the Western world was this. This is a copper tea. Oh. A copper tea is also referred roughly as a coil, but you can see it is not even coiled. It is in a tea, and what you see being black there, this is copper, that is copper, and that is copper. And it is put on this frame of plastic, again the two strings, that rest outside to remain in the in the in the in the to remain in the bath canal for it to be felt by the woman wearing it to know it is still in and number two to be used to pull it out when the time comes for it to be pulled out where is the where is the chemical that causes the uh, now action this copper is a vicious cardiotoxin mm. it kills the baby it goes for the baby, it kills the baby. That's why this thing looks smaller than the coil. If you look at the coil, the coil is much huge because you need it this size because to it causes more. to deliver, to mm -hmm. deliver what it needs to do. But this you need little copper Very little. and you will kill any developing baby in the womb. Wow. It does not work in any other way. Mm -hmm. It works by causing abortions. So, do coils therefore work like contraceptives? No. Co some contraceptives sometimes prevent ovulation. Sometimes work on the pituitary gland. Sometimes work on the cervical mucus and prevent ascent of the male seeds into the, into the, into the upper reproductive system. But this is actually introduced inside the womb for one purpose to directly kill the baby. No, it does not reach the ovary, it doesn't affect the ovary, all the pituitary gland, all the pituitary gland, all the mucus in the cervix, all the movement of the fallopian tubes, it only kills baby by either this one by directly poisoning the baby with the copper and the plastic in it, causing the inflammatory reaction in the lining of the womb, the endometrium, and therefore huge cells called macrophages which eat up the little baby and kill it even before implantation there is no such a thing in terms of abortion as vicious as this and the other one too this one too yes okay. but there is even a third one this one here is called melina 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 is this one oh this fat one with a fat stock here now you can see this fat one here mm -hmm. this fat stock is actually levonorgestrel is a hormone is a very very powerful progestogen it is put here so that you can have dual function number one use these to cause inflammation and make sure that the baby can implant and these thin out the lining of the womb so that the baby cannot implant double attack double confrontation for the baby deliberately to kill the baby now there may have been you know better than me there may have been some confusion decades past as to the mechanism of these devices uh, you know better than me but at this point 2021 is there any excuse for a pro-life physician to be either prescribing or recommending or excusing this uh, mechanism, this if, device. If, if they are doctors, I can tell you clearly, and they have been near anywhere medical facility for the last 40 years. The mechanism of action was, been, a, was always clear. Well known. Yes. Okay. It never, there has never been any change in the mechanism of action 
of this thing this device was created to cause abortions so if they're claiming not anyone specifically if, if, if there are doctors claiming to lead the pro-life movement or to be pro-life doctors or leaders and yet they and they are physicians or claiming to be physicians and yet they are excusing or promoting this mechanism are they pro-life they are not physicians in the first place ah. there are a lot of pro-life people who are not doctors yes being a doctor is double-edged because yeah. you are calling for the sword of our lord if you kill a little helpless baby deliberately you're not a physician you are not a physician can you be pro-life pro-life you how can you be pro-life and at the same time killing little babies uh -huh. yes that's contradictory so you are neither a physician nor a pro-life person are you aware of any pro-life leaders or leaders claiming to be pro-life or or to be physicians who are promoting these things they are all over the place and they're all over the place because of many, many reasons. One of them is because of their double standards. Number one, idiocy. Number three, pretense. Number four, greed, and especially greed for money. If you are, you have been trained as a medical person. There is a large market from the Western NGOs, Mary Stops, IPPF, and all other organizations like UNDP, UNDPA, UNFPA, the World Bank, the, all these organizations will pay you beautiful dollar if you accept to use your knowledge to kill babies. So if you enter their pay, you become a slave to the demons and you may think you are a doctor but you are not a doctor you excommunicate yourself the first time you kill a baby has, has dr kagia your senior has she publicly defended these mechanisms no comment no comment i understand the ministry of health has spoken about a cadre their word is cadre in their statement opposing the Kihika abortion bill. And they said that that cadre is an exclusive cadre, I'm paraphrasing now, which uh, cadre is authorized to determine when a pregnancy may be terminated. What do you think that means? I mean, I think it means madness. Madness. Madness, mad, 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 mad. Because it is pretense and um, confusing and destroying and distorting and especially when you talk like that from the ministry of health is extremely criminal because you mislead those who rely on your opinion and especially the policies from the ministry of health which is at the helm of the practice of medicine in this country when they use that term they are being deceptive and they are not only being deceptive because the ministry of health is is not is, is not somebody it is a functional unit that is getting advice from people mm -hmm. the people who advise the ministry of health mm -hmm. to have any group of people that give any reason that says you may kill a baby for any reason that group is a poisoned group is a terribly compromised group they're exo hippocratic also they are not medical people they have excommunicated themselves and therefore exo hippocratic when you excommunicate you excommunicate yourself when you in your intention so they, when they say termination of pregnancy, in this specific context, they're not talking about molar pregnancy. They're not talking about ectopic. You can't 
terminate a disease. Mm -hmm. Pregnancy is when the male and the female egg unite at that instant when you have a one-celled human being that is pregnancy fertilization fertilization yes yes that is when pregnancy starts in biology that's elementary actually pregnancy starts biologically in embryology when the male seed and the egg unite in fertilization what is created is a human being who is one celled but with everything they will ever need in their life that is when pregnancy starts pregnancy takes two roots a pregnancy can become a disease and therefore the issues of terminating it do not arise because Hippocratic doctors from the beginning of known medicine have always ways to deal with the diseases mm -hmm. and they are formulated, are written down, even the procedures to deal with issues of such a diseases exist and that now comes to the issue of ectopic pregnancy and molar pregnancy so so the ministry of health is clearly not talking about either of those no it can't be when because they say that's a disease. Of pregnancy. when they talk yeah. about termination of pregnancy they are so, talking about the second leg of pregnancy elective abortion which it, means it has gone into the womb I, and therefore they aim yeah. to destroy to kill I, to remove what is to abort to abort is to stop i i have researched this term yes uh, termination of pregnancy yes. for, for many years yes and i did a further research yes. last year yes when one of your colleagues but i won't say his name yes. a very handsome gentleman yes but i won't tell you his name yes responded to the question that i'm asking you yes and he said yes. that the ministry of health by termination of pregnancy yes. means um something like inducing childbirth something like a cesarean section the ministry of health does not mean elective abortion in this statement they released in opposition to kahika's bill i researched and i found in india in north america in europe in the united kingdom in the history of the world in the history of the top term no evidence that it has ever been used by pro-lifers by pro-choicers by anyone to refer to anything other than elective abortion did i make a mistake did i miss something no, you didn't make, and you didn't need to do all that research uh -huh. because this is elementary. Actually, it does not need research. It is elementary biology. Mm -hmm. It is elementary embryology. So what do you say? What do you say? It is when you use the word termination of pregnancy, you mean deliberate killing of a healthy baby at whichever gestation you intend to do it that is what termination of pregnancy is all about in science in embryology no research necessary no such term has ever been used no. for a cesarean section you can't use it why would a physician say such a thing because there is the called the lumbering of the confused um, people who trained in medicine and now they can't find their way in especially in the war against abortion they think they are pro-life but they are totally deceived they are totally confused is it possible that out of desperation because the ministry of health was helping us to fight the kahika bill out of desperation for the help from the ministry of health that some people are entering into even deliberate confusion and spreading deliberate confusion out of that desperation to keep the ministry of health to be perceived on our side the minister of health has never been on the side of the pro-right all right number two 
only somebody who is completely misinformed may think that the Ministry of Health can ever be pro-life. Ministry of Health is halfway funded by abortion agents, is controlled by abortion agents, employs senior abortion agents. So the Ministry of Health has never been pro-life. But the Ministry of Health is in catch-22 in terms of the Keheka Bill. Because any idiot knew that the Keheka Bill was purely an abortion bill. Abortion at any gestation, from conception up to birth of a baby, that is what the Keheka Bill was all about. The Constitution refuses that. The Ministry of Health is the arm of the government that deals with health. And therefore, the Minister of Health was not saying what it thinks. It was saying what the governments want to say. So, so when Susan Kihika was going around for weeks and months uh, in defense of her bill, saying that the bill did not... Uh, she told my mother-in-law, by the yes. way, I'm telling you, that the bill did not legalize abortion. She told people, many journalists, it was reported on that the bill did not legalize abortion. Did not legalize abortion. Was she lying? Yes. And... Uh, Yes, again, because Senator Keheka is an extremely intelligent woman. But Senator Keheka is, uh, is halfway as American as you are. Mm. And uh, her American, and Senator Keheka, uh, Keheka actually is, I hear, is a great friend of your vice president. Mm. Uh, this uh, Kama, 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 Kama yeah. uh, Harris, uh, somebody who has herself is not only an abortionist but uh, a terribly a terribly a terribly dis disorganized person because i saw one of the picture one of the clips of yeah. her in fact marrying off two sodomites and saying their <laughs> husband and wife <laughs> so she if if kihika is a friend of these kahama naris is called a kahama or what yeah, uh, kamara kamala uh, kamala yeah. <laughs> yes may i just say camel yeah <laughs> now yeah. Kihika is extremely intelligent. Kihika knew from day one because she was working for four main groups. There are others on the sides, but four main groups. She was working for Mari Stops. She was working for UNFPA. She was working for IPPF, the World Bank, and she was working for UNDPA. Those were the main sponsors. UNFPA? You, yes. Is there any chance, is there any chance that she was simply uh, well-intentioned and ignorant and simply needed to be informed? No. Kihika did not need any education. She knew directly she wanted to introduce an abortion law in this country that was all encompassing from conception to birth against the Kenyan constitution. She knew that from the beginning because Kihika did not conceptualize the bill. The bill was conceptualized by another senator six years, four years previously. So in instead of trying to educate, if she's not ignorant... Yeah, she's not ignorant. Instead of trying to educate her, should we be what? Should we be exposing? Should we be confronting her and calling her to repent? Not repenting. Repenting is a bit... She should be arrested first. You can't... Uh -huh. She cannot... She cannot repent. She should be arrested. Before... Yes. She must be arrested. Because, number one, this country our constitution does not allow deliberate killing of babies and especially it's conspiracy to murder isn't it if i if i wanted to kill my wife yes even if i hadn't done it yet if i you begin should to be talk about you it should be if arrested. i begin to talk with you about doing it yes i must be arrested you should be arrested you should be arrested and you should be and you should be taken to task for why you intend from a position of authority to deform the public who look up to you and especially on something that is aimed at attacking and destroying our own constitutional preservation of life. Is it going too far to say it is conspiracy to genocide? It is not conspiracy to genocide. 
It is genocide. Because every murder that you see starts in the mind. Like you say, if you think about killing your wife, you should be arrested. That is correct. When you think about killing Kenyan children, you should be arrested. You are thinking about killing Kenyan children Once you is express genocidal. It. Once you express when it. you express it, it is genocidal. You should not only be arrested, but you must be taken for due process in a competent jurisdiction and be forced to pay for your evil. And Kehika's was an evil mind.